Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up, my name is Glenn and today we're going to look at a host of games that have come out on the Switch in the last month or so and decide whether they are a buy, an avoid or possibly a game that you would want to wait for a sale on. We have a good variety of games here with different art styles, from different genres and at different price points, so without further ado, let's jump in and have a look. Coming up first then is a game called Turmoil which is a simulation game inspired by the oil rush in 19th century North America. Your aim is to become a successful oil entrepreneur, auctioning for land against other barons and then digging for oil in order to make as much profit as you can. You need to locate the oil underground and then store and transport it to town. However there is the potential of more than one buyer and their prices will fluctuate. Switching buyers as one's price increases over the other, all of which is being done against the clock as you only lease the land for a certain number of months. You must decide how many oil towers to set up keeping yourself in a position to maximise the oil you claim whilst not eating too far into your profit margin and you can also upgrade things such as the width of your pumps but also the methods in which you search for the oil. Do you use the tried and tested plus much cheaper downer technique or invest in newfangled scanner technology? It's up to you. With a campaign mode plus DLC pack, the heat is on, included in the price of £13.49, $14 or Euros 99 or 22 Australian dollars 50, this one was actually a very pleasant surprise. It released in the same week as the 2K games a few weeks back, so no doubt was overlooked, but if you think the premise sounds interesting, it's well worth picking up. This for me is a definite buy. They Came From The Sky is a cheap arcade high score chaser with a 1950s science fiction theme. You are in control of a flying saucer and must abduct as many humans or animals as possible either within a time limit in time trial mode or before your ship is destroyed in endless mode. You do not directly control your ship which flies from left to right at the top of the screen although you are in control of the teleport beam which will bring the humans up to your ship. Every time you use the beam your ship will change direction so clever use of it will give you some control over your ship's flight pattern. There are various power ups to collect as well as time extensions and coins that when collected can be used to buy new ships each with slightly variations in elements such as their top speed or maximum hit points and I found myself having a lot of fun with this one. It cost £2.69, $2 or Euros 99 or 4 Australian dollars 50 and as long as you know what you're getting, something to spend 10 minutes on here and there and have any sort of affinity for 1950s sci-fi like I do, then again this is a no-brainer for me, it's a buy. Next up we have Avery Attorney Definitive Edition which sees you playing as defence attorney JJ Falcon in an alternative reality of 19th century France where animals are the dominant species and revolution is in the air. The game is basically a crime investigation story very similar to the Ace Attorney series where you have four cases to solve. You do this by visiting various locations, speaking to witnesses and gathering evidence before going to court to try and clear your client of their accused crime. There is a cross-examination mechanic where you can highlight a part of a statement made by one of the prosecution's witnesses and attempt to pressure them into admitting to any lies or inaccuracies. You do this by choosing the correct line of questioning and backing up any statements you make with appropriate evidence. The story is excellent with the writing being of a very high standard. The sketched art style is lovely and classical music from the time period is used for the score. It's an incredibly good game and I finished it in just two sittings, although therein lies the problem, it's just too short. I think my playthrough clocked in at about three to three and a half hours, although to be fair the final chapter does play out in one of three ways depending on your actions, so there is some replayability. At £14.99 this just isn't quite long enough I'm afraid, especially when you consider that although the Ace Attorney trilogy is double the price, it's also about ten times as long. I'd love to recommend this as a buyer because the quality of the package deserves it, but its short length dictates that I would recommend you wait for a slight sale. Thank you. 
Cheers, Glenn. I've been playing through Xenoblade Chronicles, the definitive edition, and not having played it originally like Glenn did, I'm very much in that honeymoon period with the title. And with a number of patches since launch, actually I decided to look at the performance as well as the gameplay. And I've got to be honest, I think I'm enjoying it more than I did my time with the second game so far. Performance is absolutely slick right now. They're looking at 30 frames per second at all times. The audio is lovely. I do like the little visual tweaks and changes they've made. The resolution doesn't seem to be as bad as it was at launch particularly when you're looking at things like the grass it's not quite as much of a uh, blurry mess but so far I love the game I really enjoy the combat system there's definitely a learning curve here if you've not played the series before but what Xenoblade does really well is build your affinity with the characters nice and quickly so that when tragedies happen you actually do care and it's what a lot of RPGs fail to achieve for me this is an essential buy for any RPG or JRPG fan The next game is called Ailment, which is a top-down shooter set aboard a spaceship where the crew are in a zombified state and you as the sole survivor, with no recollection of how the series of events came to be, must uncover the truth whilst continuing to survive. You do this by navigating the rooms of the ship, all connected by a series of corridors and using the computers you find to unlock doors elsewhere, thus allowing you to progress further. It looked for all the world like a game that would be a roguelike, but actually it's not. It's instead level based and I suppose you could compare it to something like Alien Breed in some respects. In terms of positives the map works well, the basic premise is interesting and it's pretty cheap at £7.19. But there are negatives too I'm afraid, first of all it's not a twin stick shooter as no doubt you would have expected by looking at the gameplay. You move your character with the left stick and aiming at enemies is automatic as long as you hold down the fire button. This didn't feel satisfying enough for me I've got to be honest and next a lot of the time you're being attacked in tight corridors and it's almost impossible not to get hit. You can take the fight into larger spaces but you've lost a fair chunk of health by then. At other times you are attacked before you've even seen the enemy which makes it just seem a tad unfair. This is not a terrible game by any stretch but even at its cheap price personally I would avoid. Next we have Fledgling Heroes which is an endless runner of sorts, most similar in the style to something like Flappy Bird where you need to tap the screen or tap the A button in order to keep your hero airborne. There are a variety of obstacles you need to avoid in order to finish a level as well as coins to collect and golden feathers to try and find, some of which are found in treasure chests that you need to bounce on the top of whilst others are linked to objectives that you need to meet such as defeating a certain amount of enemies. The feathers can then be exchanged to open up newer levels. There are a variety of birds to play as including the parrot that you start with which of course flies through the air as well as things like penguins allowing for water based levels and there's also a level editor included as well which you unlock fairly early on. For what it wants to be it works very well and is very fairly priced at £7.99. Me personally I prefer my endless runners to be on the ground as I think this gives you a bit more control rather than having to constantly tap the screen but if you like this sort of game or things like the rocket propelled barrel levels in Donkey Kong Country Returns or Tropical Freeze then this game will suit you very nicely and I would recommend this one as a buy. The next game is Vampire the Masquerade Coteries of New York which is based on a tabletop game although the game steers clear of any tabletop mechanics instead playing out as a visual novel choose your own adventure type experience. The basic premise is that you are turned into a vampire and will join a faction and need to almost make your way up the ladder making allies and obviously a few enemies as you go. The first thing I want to say is that the writing is of a very high standard. From the moment you are turned, the world of vampirism is fleshed out beautifully, from the class systems and traditions, down to little touches such as the exact taste of each new feast of blood being described. There are three factions to choose from at the start of the game, and as you would expect, the story takes a slightly different turn depending on your choices. A big part of the moral choice is walking the line between hunting humans enough to curb the beast inside you as the game puts it, but not hunting so much that you lose your humanity. 
Static images are used throughout but these are drawn to a high standard and really fit the high society, romanticised, almost sexualised persona that vampirism has been given through the years. I very much enjoy this game and if you have any interest in visual novels I would most certainly recommend it. However, much like Avery Attorney, it's just a bit too short, coming in at about 6 hours for your £17.99. Reluctantly, I would advise waiting for a sale because of this, but again, this is a very good game if you like the genre. Next we have Project Warlock, which came out recently and is a first person shooter inspired by the classics of yesteryear such as Doom and Hexen. You play as a warlock but have access to a variety of spell based and regular weapons and can upgrade both your stats and weapons as you play. The graphics use a retro style with 2D enemies based in a 3D plane and it looks great in motion and almost reminded me a bit of a 3D binding of Isaac in regard to some of the enemy designs. The game is incredibly tough, really old school tough, probably actually harder than some of the games that inspired it, certainly in terms of the starting point anyway. At £12.99, it's not overly expensive, I will say that you can get Doom 64 and Duke Nukem 3D these days for less than that so that's something to consider, but if you do like your first person shooters, this is a very good one and I would recommend it as a buy. Infinity came out last week and is a puzzle game with a very psychedelic tone where you need to guide your character to the exit on each stage in order to move on. Things start out simple enough with you controlling his movement as gravity pulls him down, looking to avoid the walls or any other obstacles, but soon enough you will be learning new skills that allow for more elaborate puzzles, with early skills including being able to slow down or speed up your character, but ultimately the powers do increase past this. The blurb mentions that there are about 8 hours worth of gameplay for the £10.80 you'll be paying and whilst I did enjoy the puzzling, the quite abstract nature of the design, the strange sound effects and the cutscenes were just not to my taste at all. If you like the look then the puzzling is decent enough to recommend but as I didn't care for the art style at all I can't say much better than waiting for a sale with this one. I will say that there is a demo available so perhaps try this out first to get a feel for it. Out Buddies first released in 2019 on PC and I believe was developed by just one man over the course of about 6 years. This Metroidvania is now available on consoles by way of a DX version with updates including fixing some balancing issues regarding the difficulty, refining the controls and enhancing the graphics. It has a lovely retro aesthetic reminiscent of a souped up Spectrum game in some respects and actually offers a very solid Metroidvania experience. It has a serious Metroid vibe to it, but also has a nice few additions of its own, such as your automated robot friend Buddy. No, not that one. You will need to revert to being Buddy at times in order to use his skills such as scanning for useful items or moving large objects. You can even play in two player mode with the second player controlling Buddy directly. Sometimes the controls felt slightly off when it comes to some moves like wall jumping for example, but all in all this is actually a bit of a gem and it's a shame that such a great metroidvania will probably go unnoticed. You get about 18-20 to 20 hours worth of gameplay for your £15 and I would recommend this one as a buy, it's very good indeed. And we have Star Horizon, which is an on-rails space shooter which was originally on mobile devices back in 2014. Here you have 10 missions with upgradable ships, branching pathways in terms of some of the decisions you make during levels, and a number of different weapons to collect. Now when you first start playing the game the ship feels quite responsive, which is nice, but my biggest problem with it is the line of fire in which your bullets take and the aiming reticule that you have on screen don't seem to correlate. This leads to quite a few confusing moments 
where you're sure you're hitting an enemy because your bullets are going straight at it, but because your aiming reticule isn't on them, you're doing no damage. And it led to quite a few deaths while my brain processed what I was doing wrong. And for me, this was quite an immersion breaker. At £8.99, I certainly didn't hate it, but to be honest, I'd rather fire up the Switch Online Super Nintendo app and play Starwing or Star Fox instead. Unfortunately, for me, this one is an avoid. So there you have it, quite a few games there, a few buys, quite a few sales, although I will say that some of those games I really did enjoy, I just think they're slightly overpriced, and of course a couple to avoid as well. Let us know what you think about these games, are there any that interest you, have you bought any already? Please do stick it down in the comments below. A quick thank you to our patrons as always for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe of course, and until next time, happy gaming.